Number 10. Mysterious Ancient Warrior The skeleton of a very mysterious ancient warrior has just been uncovered in Russia, and it is boggling archaeologists. First of all, the warrior was found buried next to a small child, and researchers don't know if the two are linked or not. Both skeletons were found next to each other, with each dating back around 200 AD. The warrior was discovered with a short sword in a sheath made of leather and a quiver with a full set of arrowheads. And, to make things even stranger, the warrior's skeleton showed signs that he had undergone some rudimentary brain surgery previous to his death. There is a gaping hole in his head that was not caused by a wound on the battlefield. The hole appears to have been made during some kind of gruesome surgery, which was ultimately the cause of death for the warrior. As for the child, it's not clear whether it's a boy or a girl, and it's not clear what the cause of death was. The child was only around two years old when they died, and they were buried with a small trove of treasures, including jewelry interned with precious gemstones which depict incredible scenes from Greek mythology. The expensive jewelry suggests that the child had an important place in whichever society these two skeletons came from. One of the most fascinating depictions on the child's jewelry is the legendary Greek hero Perseus, holding up the decapitated head of Medusa, the gorgon that turned men to stone. So far, archaeologists have not been able to identify either skeleton, and they don't know why the child was important and they have no idea why the ancient warrior was given what almost looks like a frontal lobotomy. Number 9. Unknown Cave Exposed In Antarctica, an unknown and extremely mysterious cave was recently exposed by using Google Maps on a remote island, and some people are now claiming that the cave could be either an entrance into a hollow part of the Earth or a military cover-up. This discovery was made a couple of years ago, and the origins of the strange cave are still unknown today. What's really strange is that the cave appeared out of nowhere in 2007, and then vanished from Google Maps just six months later. The sighting was made at Greenwich Island in the very south of Antarctica. The entrance was so big that hundreds of people could have walked through it at the exact same time. There have been some fairly logical theories so far, like some who say the mysterious cave may have been lost because of melting ice, and that definitely makes sense. However, there did appear to be steps leading up to the cave in the images revealed by Google Maps. It definitely looked like something man-made, which makes it all the more mysterious that it vanished from view just overnight. There could be something strange going on in Antarctica that nobody wants us to know about, or this could just be a natural phenomenon. Right now, nobody knows the truth, especially not mainstream scientists. Have you ever visited Antarctica? What was it like? Tell me what you saw there in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more intense videos. Number 8. Secret Underground Alien Base? The town of Dulce in New Mexico is a small desert town without so much as a single traffic light. And while it may look quaint and innocent on the outside, it might just be a mirage. Some people are claiming that underneath the town of Dulce is a huge underground facility home to some of the most unimaginable technologies and experimental devices. Some people even claim that the underground base is filled with aliens and secrets that would make people's heads explode. But, of course, these crazy theories are not totally unfounded. According to How Stuff Works, the first claims of a secret base here date back to the 1930s. But it wouldn't be for another 40 years until rumors of aliens began to circulate. It all started when Gabe Valdez with the New Mexico State Police began investigating cattle mutilations in the area of Dulce. This cop apparently found a bit more than just mutilated cattle such as gas masks, glow sticks, pieces of radar, and other confusing artifacts. He also reported seeing a spacecraft in the area and discovering a dead cow with the fetus of a human-monkey-frog hybrid inside of it, which of course means that someone was using cows to incubate alien babies. To this very day, nobody knows for sure if there really is a secret underground base beneath Dulce. Some claim there are hidden tunnels in the mountains, but Nobody really knows, and the government is definitely not saying anything. 
Number 7. Drilling at White Island White Island is the most active volcano in New Zealand, located only a few miles from the mainland. It is a stratovolcano, with great prevalence in the ancient Maori myths and legends. It has been continuously active ever since it was first discovered by James Cook in 1769. White Island is also the mysterious site where a lot of people have died. You can only see a fragment of the volcano itself above the water. It's really just the peak pointing out. The rest of the volcano goes down to the sea floor. White Island became prosperous in the 1840s when it was discovered that sulfur and gypsum could be extracted from the land. That was when mining operations began on White Island, extracting sulfur and gypsum in huge amounts. According to the Auckland Museum, between 1885 and 1900, more than 5,000 tons of sulfur were extracted and sent to the mainland for use in the vulcanization of rubber, the manufacturing of gunpowder and matches, and pharmaceuticals and pesticides. But here's where the mystery and horror comes in. On September 10, 1914, 10 miners were killed when a crater wall collapsed in sight of the mine and engulfed the men in a volcanic mud flow known as Lahar. The only surviving member of the crew was Peter the Great, a resident cat. He was found three weeks later totally uninjured. Unfortunately, the bodies of the workers were never seen again. Number 6. The Giant's Footprint in South Africa, there is apparently a giant's footprint preserved in a rock overhang that some people believe proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that giants really did walk the earth. The footprint is located in a remote area a couple hundred miles east of Johannesburg, very close to the border with Swaziland. The footprint is a fairly popular tourist attraction, with someone even spray painting the name Goliath over top of it. The print stands 3 feet 11 inches tall, 1.1 meters, from toe to heel, and is oriented vertically. The really confusing part is that it's vertical, meaning the giant who made the huge footprint would have had to kick the stone to make such an impression. This doesn't make a lot of sense. According to Robert Schoch, a renowned researcher who has written books on ancient cultures and alien artifacts, the giant's footprint is actually just a natural occurrence. Robert claims the footprint was formed because of natural weathering and erosion, and the fact that it directly matches a giant human's foot is totally a coincidence, just like seeing an angel in the clouds. And really, if you look closely at the rock where the footprint was formed, you can even see the impression of a snowman. So is this a giant's footprint, or just humans having overactive imaginations? Right now, we don't really know for sure. Number 5. The Cemetery of Pets Archaeologists have just discovered what can only be described as a massive pet cemetery, filled with the graves of nearly 600 cats and dogs. Each pet was given their own burial plot, some were still wearing collars or other decorations, and initial analysis has shown that they were cared for despite injuries and old age, just as we do today for our pets. This was only 2,000 years ago in Egypt. The graves were found on the coast near the Red Sea in the early Roman port town of Berenice. The site was a huge mystery when it was first discovered 10 years ago. It took a decade for excavations to reveal the pet cemetery, which according to Michael McKinnon, a zoo archaeologist from the University of Winnipeg, was unlike anything else he had ever uncovered. The cemetery itself was found just outside the ancient city walls underneath a Roman trash dump. The animals were not mummified, none of them appeared to have been sacrificed, and the strangest part is some of the pets were even monkeys. But there is one thing that archaeologists and scientists can't figure out. They don't understand why the people of the seaport town 2,000 years ago valued their pets so much more than anyone else in the ancient world. It could be that they had emotional bonds with their animals. Or it could be that the animals were respected because of their jobs, either killing rats or acting as guards for people's homes. Number 4. Pumapunku The ancient site of Pumapunku in Bolivia is one of the most mysterious and boggling places of historic value on Earth. Academic archaeologists and historians alike have almost no idea what was going on with the advanced prehistoric civilization that constructed this city. 
whether they were true geniuses or whether they had help from extraterrestrial teachers. Puma Punku spans a large area south of the ancient city of Tiwanaku, near the infamous Lake Titicaca. It predates even the Inca civilization in South America. But the big mystery to scientists here is the complexity of the structures inside the ruins of the ancient city. The doorways were cut in such a way that suggests laser technology was used. Not a single chisel mark has been found, and some of these stones interlock in such a way that would almost be impossible. Even with today's advanced technology, you can't even fit a needle through some of the building's blocks. According to Jason Yeager, a professor of anthropology working with the University of Wisconsin, by the time the Incas conquered the area in 1470, the city was already abandoned and the original inhabitants were ghosts. The Inca then incorporated Pumapunku into the rest of their empire and their culture, but the people who actually built the original site never returned. To make matters even more confusing, the exact age of Pumapunku is highly debated. Radiocarbon dating says that the city was constructed around 500 AD, while some professional archaeologists say it dates back to 15,000 BC. Even today, nobody knows the truth about this ancient place. Number 3. Mystery of the Mass Grave One of the most thoroughly excavated ancient places in all of Macedonia is the Roman colony of Skupai, located in the northern region of the country. But even though there have been digs going on here for decades, archaeologists were still shocked in 2011 when they discovered a previously unknown mass grave that turned out to be one of the largest massacres in the last few hundred years. The archaeologists managed to identify around 180 male skeletons that had been tossed into a shallow pit and then buried. Most of the men had been decapitated, and most of them had their arms tied behind their backs. Some bones even showed signs of major violence, such as cleaving and breaking. According to the archaeologists working on the site, it was a terrible thing to behold, and looked like a modern massacre. But here's the mystery. Nobody knows why the men were killed, decapitated, and then dumped into this murder pit. They could have been executed. They could have been prisoners of war. The dead men may even have been part of a conflict during the destabilization of the Roman Empire near its great and dramatic fall in the 4th century AD. Number 2. Strange Goddess Statue Farmers have just discovered a giant, six-foot-tall statue of a mysterious female that could be a goddess. This happened inside of a Mexican citrus grove, when farmers digging in the dirt randomly came upon the statue. Archaeologists were called in to investigate, and their initial findings showed that the statue could represent an elite woman, a previously unknown goddess, or a mixture of both. The discovery was recently announced by the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Mexico, and it was the first statue of its kind to be found in the Huasteca region. The carving of the woman likely dates back to between 1450 and 1520. The statue also has distinct Aztec influences. But other than all these plain facts, archaeologists don't know who the statue depicts or how she ended up buried inside of the citrus grove. Some archaeologists are saying it could be the unknown goddess of a fertility cult created by the ancient Aztecs. But the truth is that nobody recognizes her. The woman's face hasn't appeared on other artifacts, and right now her existence is a huge mystery. Number 1. The Sayama Lines the Sayama Lines in Bolivia are very similar to the Nazca Lines in Peru, but a little different and a little bit more mysterious. These lines are also geoglyphs, and they were etched into the ground over a duration of about 3,000 years by whatever indigenous people resided near the Sayama volcano. Nobody knows why they were constructed, kind of like with the Nazca Lines, and many alien astronaut theorists claim that the technology used to make the lines would have been impossible to obtain for the ancient people living in the area. But what exactly are the Sayama Lines? These are straight lines carved like paths into the ground that stretch for up to 12 miles or 20 kilometers. The lines cover a huge area, where each line is perfectly straight and together they create a web unlike anything seen anywhere else on Earth. Their precision is remarkable. 
how exactly the lines were created, what they could have possibly been used for 3,000 years ago, and whose hands carved them in the earth is still a major mystery to this very day. And to be honest, scientists hardly have a workable theory. Do you have any interesting theories that could solve one of these mysterious discoveries? Number 10. Lake Natron If there's one place on Earth you should never go swimming, it's Lake Natron in Tanzania. It is one of the most dangerous bodies of water on the planet, but not for the reasons you might think. It's not strong currents that pull you under, but if you're not careful, the water might turn you to stone. First of all, it's important to note that Lake Natron is a salt lake. This means that water flows into the lake, but not out of it. The only way the water is able to escape is by evaporating. But over time, as the water continues to evaporate, it leaves behind a concentration of minerals and salt. This is very similar to the Great Salt Lake found in Utah. But Lake Natron is different for one reason. It's extremely alkaline. It has a high concentration of the chemical called natron which is basically just a mixture of sodium carbonate and baking soda. The water's pH level is roughly 10.5, according to the Smithsonian Magazine. That's almost as high as ammonia. The result is that almost no animals are able to live in the harsh water, which can reach scorching temperatures of up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. There's only one fish that lives in the water, along with a colony of flamingos who feed on algae and breed near the shore. But how does the water turn something into stone? When migrating birds crash into the surface of the lake, they end up being chemically preserved in the water. There are entire flocks of birds that have washed ashore perfectly preserved like the creepiest bird mummies you've ever seen. Scary to think about what would happen if a human tried to swim here. Number 9. The Devil's Pool The Devil's Pool in Victoria Falls is one of the most popular destinations for tourists to visit along the border of Zambia and Zimbabwe. It's a natural pool of water right on the top of the beautiful Victoria Falls, which is also the largest waterfall in the entire world. There are also crocodiles lurking sometimes. This seems like a pretty horrendous place to go for a swim, but it's actually quite safe. At least it is for most of the year. There's a rock lip protruding upward that keeps visitors safe, allowing them to peer over the edge with impunity. Daredevil visitors enjoy leaning directly over the edge of Victoria Falls while swimming in Devil's Pool. However, if you visit at the wrong time of the year and decide to take a dip in the Devil's Pool, you could end up cascading very quickly over the edge. Most tourists visit between October and November. This is when the water levels are lowest, but between January and June, you're there during the wet season, and the river waters are running so strong during these months that even a brief swim in the Devil's Pool, nowhere near the edge, can result in you getting carried over the brink to your ultimate death. Number 8. Shark Alley There are a lot of places throughout our world where sharks are frequently found. These apex predators are known to kill, but there are still people who dare to swim with sharks. But the most dangerous place to go diving where you have the highest likelihood of getting eaten by a shark is a place called Shark Alley. This is a small stretch of water that sits between two islands in South Africa. And yes, it's populated by quite a lot of sharks. Specifically, great white sharks circle both the island and spend a good amount of time inside the narrow channel. The reason there are so many great white sharks here is that from April to September, there is a massive colony of fur seals that come to hang out and do their seal stuff. The sharks are attracted to the smell of the stinky seals, and they come to hunt. If you happen to be a swimmer in the water at the time, you have a pretty good chance of getting one of your legs bitten off. Shark Alley is also a popular place for cage diving where you can get a little too up close and personal with these predators of the ocean. Though, of course, it's definitely the place to come if you're interested in having a shark bite at you through some metal bars. Would you like to swim with sharks? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. 
Number seven, Jacuzzi of Despair. With a name like the Jacuzzi of Despair, you know this is not a place you really want to swim. But of course, it's not actually a jacuzzi either. This is an underwater lake that was recently discovered roughly 3,000 feet or 914 meters below the surface of the water in the Gulf of Mexico. The Jacuzzi of Despair is also referred to as the Hot Tub Brine Machine. It is a crater-like pool that rises 12 feet or 3.6 meters above the ocean floor, surrounded by bright red and white mineral deposits. It's an extremely salty part of the ocean filled with dissolved methane that can kill almost any critter that ventures inside of it. If you were trying to go swimming here, you would undoubtedly meet your demise. But of course, you would probably have a hard time getting 3,000 feet, again 914 meters, beneath the surface of the ocean. That's not really something that a pair of flippers is going to allow you to do. The only people who have ever seen what goes on inside the Jacuzzi of Despair had to use a remotely operated vehicle or submarine to do their investigation. By now, you're probably wondering how exactly a pool came to be on the bottom of the ocean. Well, it wasn't formed overnight. It took millions of years for this enormous pool to form. As water was evaporated, giant beds of salt were left behind. Salt layers became buried, and over time the weight of all the sediments caused the ground beneath them to crack and shift, releasing oil and brine. This has worked to create a type of liquid filled with brine that's a different consistency from normal salt water at the bottom of the ocean. When animals accidentally swim into it, not realizing what's happening, they get trapped and die from exposure to the chemicals. Number 6. World's Strongest Whirlpool You've probably heard the word maelstrom before, but you probably haven't heard it used to refer to a place where you should never go swimming. Interestingly enough, the word maelstrom was actually introduced by Edgar Allan Poe back in 1841. It's a Nordic word that we use today to describe something like a chaotic, bottomless pit. For example, descending into a maelstrom of madness. But the original Nordic word was used to describe a very powerful whirlpool that is still in Norway to this day. And in fact, it just so happens to be the most powerful maelstrom in the entire world. It's located just a few miles east of the small city of Bodo. It's known properly as Saltstramen Maelstrom, and you definitely don't want to go swimming in it. In a small channel between two pieces of land, hundreds of millions of tons of water are forced through every six hours, with the waters raging at 22 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour. It's a literal maelstrom. A vortex formed where the current is at its strongest, about 15 feet or 4.5 meters deep. The maelstrom has existed for at least 2,000 years, and anyone silly enough to try and swim their way out of these waters would be sucked into a spiraling death of horrific proportions. You definitely don't want to go swimming here, no matter how strong of a swimmer you think you are. Number 5. Jacob's Well Jacob's Well is probably one of the most dangerous places in the United States to take a dip. And yet, for the people of Texas, Jacob's Well offers a reprieve from the burning hot summer sun. The well is located in Hayes County, just an hour from Austin. It's fed by an aquifer, which works by pushing water upwards through the well and feeding it into the nearby creek. Locals love swimming here, but it's actually incredibly dangerous. The well has been around for hundreds of years and has claimed its fair share of lives. But what is really so dangerous about it? The big problem is that the well is, well, deep. It's at least 100 feet or 30 meters deep, meaning that you really need to be geared up in scuba equipment to even try reaching the bottom. And what's at the bottom? There's a bunch of mysterious caves. Two of the most famous deaths happened in 1979 when two young men got caught inside the caves and drowned. The remains of one of them was found in 1981, but the other wasn't uncovered until 2000. That alone should tell you how deep and dangerous Jacob's Well is. Once you get down there, you can't tell up from down and anything can happen. It's believed that at least nine people throughout history have died while trying to dive here, making it one of the most dangerous diving spots on the planet. Number 4. Acid Pools 
This next one is kind of a no-brainer, but it's so interesting that we're going to talk about it anyway. Far to the north in the country of Ethiopia lies the Danakil Depression, one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. According to the BBC, temperatures can reach upwards of 113 degrees Fahrenheit, or 45 degrees Celsius. The land here is barren, and it doesn't look like the kind of place where you would want to take a beach vacation. It's about 330 feet or 100 meters below sea level in a highly volcanic area. But even for such a horrifying and destitute place, there is liquid. But you definitely would not want to swim in it. There are pools of acid all throughout this terrifying landscape, all of which are the result of geothermal activity happening beneath the ground. It's extremely briny water that produces hydrogen sulfide gas, chlorine vapor, and a whole heap of other chemicals that can choke the air from your lungs. One of the biggest lakes in the area is known by the locals as Killer Lake, because if you try to walk around it, you can see the corpses of birds and other animals that died trying to drink the water and the carbon dioxide emissions blew into their faces. The animals literally suffocated before they could even get the water into their mouths. If you tried to swim inside of this lake, you definitely wouldn't make it out. Number three, Bubbly Creek. One of the most dangerous creeks in the world, believe it or not, is actually located in Illinois. It's called Bubbly Creek, and it's a small branch of the Chicago River that is filled with the disgusting results of years of scraps coming out of the local meat packing plants. That's right, there's a bunch of animal carcasses at the bottom of this creek. You might not die from swimming here, but you're definitely going to be extremely grossed out, and you might even catch a disease or two. The creek is entirely within the city of Chicago. It got its name because of the gases that bubble out of the riverbed due to the rapid decomposition of all the blood and entrails which were dumped into the water in the earliest part of the 20th century by the corrupted local meatpacking businesses. These businesses were mostly around Union Stock Yards, and they have since stopped dumping their trash into the water and have even filled in many parts of the creek. However, Bubbly Creek is still hugely polluted and definitely not a great place to take your kids swimming. Number two, the River Wharf. In the lovely countryside of Yorkshire, the River Wharf is a dangerous place to go swimming, even though thousands of people flock to its bank and swim in its waters every year. It's not quite as peaceful as it looks. According to the Yorkshire Post, a young man from Bradford recently drowned in the nearby Linton Falls, sparking renewed concern that the River Wharf is no place to go swimming. It apparently has misleading depths, all kinds of hidden drops, and surprisingly strong currents that can take out poor swimmers and children alike. Also, the water here is extremely cold, even though it may not feel like it in the summer months. Sometimes this causes people to go into shock, stopping them from reaching the bank of the river and resulting in them drowning. Of course, you could probably say this about any river in the world, but this is particularly frightening for the Yorkshire locals who worry about their children going missing, all because they wanted to go for a bit of a dip. If you happen to live in England, be sure you steer clear of the river wharf. Number one, the boiling lake. The boiling lake is exactly what it sounds like. It is a cauldron of bubbling, boiling water that is typically shrouded by clouds of vapor. It's also the second largest boiling lake in the world, at roughly 200 feet or 61 meters across. The lake is located in the country of Dominica, only accessible via a four-hour hike from local villages into the mountains. It's definitely a difficult trek to get there, but whatever you do, stay away from the lake. It could boil the flesh right off your bones. In fact, the local tourist organizations advise extreme caution even when stepping around the lake, as one wrong move can prove disastrous. Nobody is quite sure how deep the lake is, and most people believe that it was created because of a crack in the bottom that lets gas escape from the molten lava hidden within a volcanic crater below. The water in the lake is collected from the hills during the rainy season, and two small streams empty into it. The hot lava below then keeps the entire pool at a boiling point. It's beautiful to look at, but don't you dare step foot in the water. Thanks for watching.
Would you dare swim in any of these locations? Number 10, narrow escape from volcano. In 2019, someone trying to get a better view into Hawaii's Kilauea volcano had an extremely close brush with death when he accidentally tumbled inside. This guy was a 32-year-old soldier, and apparently he leaned so far into the volcanic crater that he tripped and stumbled into it, falling over 70 feet or 21 meters into the smoking hole of death. According to a spokesman with the park, the man foolishly climbed over the metal railing, and that was when the disaster struck. CBS News said that the man refused to release his name, which isn't that surprising considering he was probably super embarrassed. He had been taking part in military training exercises on the Big Island when he unintentionally fell into the volcano. But even though this guy may sound extremely unlucky for what happened, it could have been much worse. He actually should have fallen 300 feet or 91 meters to the very bottom of the crater, at which point he probably would have died. But he was extremely lucky to land on a narrow ledge only 70 feet, 21 meters, down. This enabled rescuers from the park to rappel down, hook the man up to a stretcher, and then airlift him to the Hilo Medical Center. He was definitely injured, but after just a couple of days, he was reported as being in stable condition. Number 9. Tsunami Survivor A tsunami survivor was rescued after spending a miserable 15 days drifting aimlessly in the Indian Ocean. This guy turned out to be one of the luckiest men on Earth, after surviving on nothing but coconuts that he had found floating in the water by ripping them open with his teeth. This all went down about 15 years ago, after a devastating earthquake rocked Indonesia and Malaysia. 21-year-old Ari Afrizal was docked at Port Klang near the capital city of Kuala Lumpur, when the giant tsunami wave came bearing down on the city. The waves slammed down on those still on the docks. Ari and his friends were literally swept out of their boat and dragged into the sea, and before he knew what was happening, the land had vanished and Ari was floating in the middle of nowhere on a small plank of wood only about 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. In an interview with the Associated Press, Ari said that he stayed floating for five days before spotting a small raft with a hut on it. Inside that hut, he found a gallon of water. It was the luckiest thing that could have possibly happened to him, besides getting rescued, of course. Then, ten days later, a container ship sailed right past Ari and his little raft. The captain just so happened to spot the frail man waving his t-shirt and screaming, and Ari was saved. All of Ari's stars really lined up, otherwise he would have surely perished and been sleeping with the fishes. Number 8. Metal Beam of Death A man in San Jose walked away with only a small scratch on his arm after an enormous steel beam crashed directly through his windshield and nearly splattered the man's torso. According to the San Jose Fire Department, this unidentified man was driving southbound on Highway 280 when the truck in front of him experienced some difficulties. The metal loader tray, which is basically just a huge metal beam of death, somehow disconnected and flew off the back of the truck, bounced off the pavement like a ricocheting tennis ball, then impaled the windshield of this unfortunate guy's car. But it really was one of the closest scraps with death a person can have. The metal beam literally smashed through the center of his windshield, missing the man's body by mere inches. Hopefully this guy understands just how lucky he is to be alive and volunteer at a soup kitchen or something. Have you ever had anything scary happen to you on the highway? Or any close call? What did you do? Let us know in the comments section below. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. The Wrong Injection Sometimes people are saved from their own stupidity by sheer dumb luck. Yet again, another unidentified man had a close scrape with death when he injected himself with a rather strange concoction made in his own home. The guy got a hold of some magic mushrooms, brewed a tea, and then thought it would be a good idea to inject the magic mushroom tea directly into his veins. This case was so bizarre that it was even published in the Journal of Academy of Consultation Liaison Psychiatry. Since the man thought that injecting himself with the magic mushroom concoction would cure his bipolar disorder, 
Of course, it didn't cure anything. The man was rushed to his local hospital after he was discovered an unspecified amount of time later in an extremely disoriented state. Emergency medical professionals at the hospital found that several of his organs were failing. Apparently, the injections of the mushroom tea had caused a type of fungus to begin growing inside of his veins, and this did some serious damage to almost every part of his body. This guy was basically turning himself into a mushroom. Doctors needed to treat his damaged organs, he was forced to take antibiotics, and he even needed antifungal medicine to kill the infection inside of his veins. The trip to the hospital wasn't exactly the trip the guy was looking for. And as a word to the wise, the doctor who treated this extremely lucky man suggested that the public really needs to be properly informed about the dangers of these types of substances. If this guy hadn't been taken to the hospital in time, his self-administered injection would have been the death of him. Number 6. The Deadly Dog Lick An elderly woman in Britain recently escaped with her life after nearly dying because a dog licked her face. She was not only extremely unlucky that the dog's tongue almost killed her, but she was also very lucky that she had been on the phone with a relative when she began to slur her speech and grow unresponsive. The relative immediately became concerned and got a hold of the paramedics, who subsequently found the old woman unconscious and unresponsive in her home. If it hadn't been for that family phone call, she would have very likely died sitting alone in her chair. But by now, you're probably wondering how exactly the woman was nearly killed by a dog's tongue? What happened was that bacteria found inside the mouths of both dogs and cats must have somehow gotten transferred into her bloodstream when her dog licked her face. The bacteria caused a sepsis infection, which, according to the Chief of Infectious Diseases at North Shore University Hospital, is something that can have deadly effects on those who are already immunocompromised. Sepsis caused the woman to experience confusion, headaches, diarrhea, fever, and a shutdown of her kidneys. Sepsis poisons your blood and causes your organs to fail. And that's exactly what happened in this poor lady, all because of some puppy love. But before you get too worried, this is not a common experience. It doesn't happen often, and even in this woman's case, she survived, though narrowly escaping death. Number 5. Skydiving Gone Wrong An 80-year-old pensioner was recently left hanging precariously from her skydiving instructor while plummeting towards the ground in a horrifying incident of skydiving gone wrong. Apparently, the 80-year-old woman decided that she didn't want to jump at the very last second and tried clinging to the door. But it was too late. Her harness came loose as she was dragged out of the airplane anyway and left dangling from her instructor as they sped towards the ground at a blistering 125 miles per hour. What's even crazier is that the whole incident was caught on video, and you can see the woman clinging on for dear life while her clothes are being ripped off by the speeding winds. The woman was in extreme danger of slipping out and falling, plummeting to the ground below. If it hadn't been for the instructor's instincts and training, the woman very well may have died. But luckily, the instructor managed to keep a hold of the woman, his parachute was eventually released, and they both landed with no injuries. It was a close call, and basically all because the woman panicked at the last minute. Number 4. Energy Drink Heart Attack Imagine almost dying because you drank too many energy drinks. That's exactly what happened to yet another unidentified man after guzzling energy drinks and narrowly escaping a deadly heart attack. This guy was only 26 years old when the incident happened. He had no previous health issues. He had nothing wrong with him at all. And yet, he ended up going to the emergency room because of a severe pain in his chest and left arm, which had been going on for about nine hours. For almost half a day, this guy suffered a heart attack, sweating and sick. And yet, the doctors in Texas could not figure out what was going on. They did some tests, and the man's heart rate, oxygen levels, and blood pressure were all normal. It wasn't until a cardiac catheterization was done that doctors realized one of his arteries was completely blocked. The man then informed the doctors that he typically drank up to 10 cans of energy drinks a day the equivalent of about four liters. 
you're probably thinking by now that the reason for his suffering should have been pretty obvious. But he didn't even think about it. He needed a team of doctors to tell him that drinking four liters of energy drinks a day was a horrible idea. The doctors figured out that the energy drinks probably left a blood clot inside of him that ultimately led to his heart attack, while excess levels of caffeine probably caused the walls of his coronary artery to contract unexpectedly. This guy had to have a stent put inside of his artery to improve his blood flow, and it took two days for him to be discharged from the hospital, at which point he had to promise not to drink any more energy drinks. However, it's unknown whether he kept his promise. Number 3. Parkour No More A Russian YouTuber named Sergei Surakov almost fell to his death in a parkour accident that was easily avoidable. He fell from the 25th floor of a building during a parkour stunt when he missed his footing, and the fall would have killed him except that he miraculously managed to grab hold of some electric cables as he fell. Unfortunately, the electric cables shocked him. But even though he was being shocked, he managed to climb back onto the roof of the building. It was an extremely narrow brush with death that lasted only seconds. If it hadn't been for those random electric cables, this guy's misplaced foot would have left him splattered in a puddle of guts on the ground 25 floors below. The incident was even caught on video, and watching it is enough to make your hands go numb, especially if you're afraid of heights already. Number 2. Attack of the Popcorn Adam Martin was a 41-year-old firefighter and narrowly escaped dying while eating some popcorn. This is one of the weirder brushes with death, and one of those one-in-a-million incidents you only ever hear about on the news. According to the New York Post, Adam needed to have open-heart surgery after receiving a fatal blood infection, all because he got a piece of popcorn stuck in his teeth. He had an infection known as endocarditis, which left the inner lining of his heart chambers and valves infected with germs, threatening to shut down his heart. But what's really crazy is that doctors couldn't figure out how he had gotten the infection. Even Adam didn't know. He really had to trace back everything that had happened recently in his life, until he remembered the night he was sharing a bag of popcorn with his wife while watching a movie. He remembered trying to get the piece of popcorn out of his teeth using random objects around the house, from a piece of wire to a rusty old nail. Hey, what about some floss, Adam? It was a long time after this desperate attempt to remove the piece of popcorn that Adam began suffering night sweats, headaches, and constant fatigue. It later turned out that he had the fatal blood infection, and he was extremely lucky that the surgery turned out alright and he lived to eat popcorn another day. Number 1. Cat Scratch Mayhem A woman recently looked death straight in the eye after almost dying because of a small scratch given to her by a stray cat in her garden. Moira Brady was extremely lucky after the cat scratched her hand punctured her skin, and a week later, her hand had swelled to the size of a balloon. Moira lost a finger on her left hand throughout the desperate battle to defeat the disease given to her by the cat, and doctors have said she's lucky to be alive. Even still, the infection completely ruined her life. Even after she was healed, she to this day is incapable of doing the simplest task, such as taking food out of the oven. This is because the cat scratch gave Moira a deadly condition known as MRSA, which resulted in a bacterial infection. The infection ended up going straight through her body, and she almost lost her whole hand and her life. She had to get skin grafts because the infection was literally rotting the skin off of her body. This is one of the most horrific things that could happen to a person, and all because of a tiny little cat claw. Cats may be cute, but some of them are full of deadly diseases that can turn you into a walking zombie. Thanks for watching. What was your closest brush with death? Tell me about it in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.